It seems everyone is aware Ethereum is merging over to a proof of stake consensus mechanism. But what does that mean for the average investor? And what will happen after the merge takes place? I don't know. <laughs> well, no worries. I got you covered. So let's go right ahead and break it down. It seems there are plenty of misconceptions regarding the merge to proof of stake for Ethereum. So let's go ahead and clear up five of them to help you better understand the merge. Now, the first misconception I'm going to go over is Ethereum gas fees will reduce after the merge. Ethereum's impending upgrade will reduce Ethereum's infamous gas fees is one of the biggest misconceptions circulating among investors. The merge is a change of consensus mechanism that will transition Ethereum from a proof of work to a proof of stake. Now, the purpose of this is for Ethereum to be able to scale much more while using a method that's less energy efficient, decreasing energy consumption up to 99%. Now, the developer community is currently working on a roll-up centric roadmap to make transactions cheaper. Think of the Lightning Network that it is currently running on top of Bitcoin as an example. If you were to just trade Bitcoin without the Lightning Network, the fees would be higher and the transactions would be slower. But these roll-ups that are going to be running on top of the Ethereum blockchain is going to make it much faster and less expensive. Now, the second misconception is Ethereum transactions will be faster after the merge. Ethereum transactions will not be noticeably faster. However, the beacon chain allows validators to publish a block every 12 seconds instead of every 13 seconds, which is currently on Ethereum right now. So that is a one second difference, which is nothing to go crazy about. And while Ethereum developers believe that transitioning to proof of stake will enable a 10% increase in block production, the slight improvement will go unnoticed by most users. Now, the third misconception is the merge will result in downtime on the Ethereum blockchain. The developers anticipate no downtime as block transitions from being built using proof of work to being built using proof of stake is the same as when Ethereum had previous upgrades like the London upgrade that took place. It did not result into any downtime. It just, as soon as a block started being mined, bam, it transitioned over to that upgrade. Same thing's about to take place for this proof of stake merge. The fourth misconception is investors will be able to withdraw staked ETH after the merge. So if you didn't know, currently there is a lot of individuals who are staking Ethereum in the beacon chain, earning interest while they are supporting the merge. In order to do so, you need at least 32 Ethereum to even start staking your ETH. And that ETH turns into ST ETH, which is known as staked ETH. Now, it is currently backed one by one for Ether, so one ST ETH is equivalent to one ETH, and it currently lies locked on the beacon chain. While users would love to be able to withdraw after this merge takes place in September, that will absolutely plummet the price of Ethereum, so it's not going to be able to happen. Now, withdrawal of ST ETH holdings will be made available after the next major upgrade known as the Shanghai upgrade. As a result, the assets will be locked and illiquid for at least 6 to 12 months after the merger. So no worries about an Ethereum dump anytime soon. And for the last misconception is validators will not be able to withdraw ETH rewards till the Shanghai upgrade. Now, if you know how miners work, they use their GPU, they sacrifice electricity to in order to get the coin that they are mining. For an example, Ethereum. Validators do the same thing, but they stake their ETH, they sacrifice their ETH in order to earn more ETH. So in a way, the richer you are, the richer you are going to get. So while ST ETH remains blocked for investors until withdrawals are resumed following the Shanghai upgrade, Validators will have immediate access to the fee rewards and maximal extractable value earned during block proposals from the execution layer or the Ethereum mainnet. So as long as they are validating Ethereum transactions as time goes on, they'll get paid right away. So that is a misconception there. So to sum it all up, after this merge ends up taking place in September, Ethereum will be much more energy efficient with the capabilities to scale to heights it could have never reached using the proof of work consensus mechanism. But this merge is a five step process, which is ultimately going to take five to seven years. Now this first step, which is happening here in September, 
I believe is the most important step to focus on the energy usage and the developments to transfer over smoothly. The following step called the surge will focus on expanding scalability to start enabling rollups and sharding, making the transactions much cheaper by breaking up the data. After this step is complete, there is another three steps that will take place in the span of five years after that, which is ultimately going to finish this merge. So this is a long-term investment. Ethereum does have massive potential to grow over the next five years as it'll be much more scalable and easier to build on, making it attractive for all sorts of investors, consumers, corporations, and so forth. So since people's attention spans are quick to go these days, I will wrap up this video at the very least knowing you learned some sort of knowledge that you didn't have yesterday. So if you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to smash that like and subscribe. I'll catch you guys on the next update.